Morning, Gary. Morning. Great to see you. Um, we'll start with the big news. There's an alleged takeover of Bournemouth. What can you tell us? <laughs> no, nothing. Um, nothing at all. Um, yeah, obviously I was not involved in any sort of discussions like that. Um, so yeah, I've been, been hard at work over the other side on the grass and takeovers and discussions of that level are obviously a long way from, from my mind and what I'm focused on at the moment, which is, is Newcastle. It's going to be a big test. Clearly that could play into your hands though, if the ownership, the board are focusing on a new owner that would leave you to focus on the football. Their focus isn't going to be about finding a new manager. It's going to be about sorting out that situation. So therefore, you could be left to just carry on the good work that you're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I haven't considered any anything ar around takeovers, discussions upstairs, my position, wh whatever that is, it is. Um, I know it's, it's going to be boring for you guys, but I'm just fully focused. Every, literally every minute of my day is taken up by how, how we go about Newcastle for the last, well, since I heard the Brighton game was off. Um, my, my wife and kids will tell you every minute of my day so far since that is Newcastle, either on the laptop, on the grass with the lads. Um, pure focus on, on how we go there, have an impact on the game and, and come away with a positive result again. Clearly, last week's events with regards to the Queen would have been sad for, for everyone connected. But for you, it was an opportunity to just sort of take stock of the situation because you, you were chucked in quite quickly to the Wolves game. You had no time to prepare for the Forest game. Has this last 10 days or so been a, an opportunity for you to just breathe and, and assess things and, and actually do a little bit of work with the team without having a, a match so quick? Yeah, I think obviously extremely sad news and um, I think that the the game being off was from like a, a coaching and a, a pure football perspective when to have it called off on, on the Friday is obviously we've done all the work for Brighton so we wasn't thinking Newcastle we wasn't thinking longer term at that point so didn't really give us any more time to prepare for the for the Newcastle game because we were we were fully preparing for the Brighton one um, but yeah we've we've done some real good work lads lads have been brilliant again all for the for the whole period we replaced the Brighton game with a training session. They trained well. Um, and then, as as I said, yeah, switched focus fully to, to Newcastle, making sure the boys are fit, sharp, um, in a good place. So, yeah, I'm pleased with the work we've we've got into them, as, as I was last week for the Brighton game. Pleased with what, what they've done. Um, feel like they're ready and, and, and we go up there looking to, to cause Newcastle some problems. Newcastle been positive this season, probably haven't won as many games as they would have liked, but they've kept three clean sheets. This will be the first time that Eddie Howe has managed to side against Bournemouth. You will be familiar with Eddie because he joined Portsmouth while, while you were there as a, as a youngster, although you didn't play together a great deal because of his injury. What do you re remember about him and the character he was and just that environment from those early Pompey days when you were younger? Yeah, I just remember him going for a real tough time there. Um, everyone um, was trying to support him and help him at that moment because, as you say, his, in, his injury problems there were, were really tough for him um, at, at a very young age as well. Um, but, yeah, he showed real resilience and was always keen to work. And I think you see that in the success he's had since those days um, with his managerial career. Um, yeah, and they're, they're, they're a very good side. of uh, Every game I've watched of them, they've been front foot, aggressive, cause teams problems, probably should have more points than they've got so far. Expect them to be very high up the league this year. I would, I would expect them to be sort of top eight, top ten by the end of the season. Um, they're sort of aggressive, play forward a lot, ask you big questions. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be a tough game for sure. Have yours and Eddie's paths crossed over the last few years? Is he a, a coach, a manager, someone that you've perhaps looked up to over the last nine years, where you've been developing yourself as a coach? Oh, of course, any any young coach that has been as successful as. As, as Eddie has, you always look when you when, when that's the sort of industry you want to go into. You always look and think that's he's he's doing a great job. How how's he going about that? What are they doing? Um, and obviously, I know um, Richard Hughes fairly well. Who's who knows Eddie? So a couple of times we bump into each other, try and pick his brains. Or um, so yeah, I mean that probably a, a while ago now. But yeah, we, our paths have crossed a few times, and um, not surprised that he's he's still doing very well. 
You mentioned uh, how they've been a bit unlucky points-wise, Newcastle. What um, you know, they gave Manchester City a great game. They've had a couple of VARs and things, but you know, what what has been key to them giving the likes of Liverpool, City, the best team, such tough games? Um, I think they have a real, real athleticism about them across the team, and that, that, that they can be very aggressive with their very front foot. They they press, they make it difficult for you. Um, they've signed good players. Um, they're well organised. I think yeah, they're just a yeah, they're they're a real good outfit. I think it. Um, they they probably could, uh, should have won the Palace game. Uh, as you say, they were the Manchester City game was a strange one, but a fantastic performance against the top side. Um, they have felt unlucky at Liverpool, probably. So yeah, they're they're a good side, mate. They're main, mainly they're, they're very very physical. They've got good pace, good legs, uh, midfield, top line. They're, yeah, they're a good side. So they'll ask big questions of everyone that goes there, I'm sure. Bournemouth's last two away games have been a bit contrasty. Um, how does a team bounce back so well after the disappointment at Liverpool and then having fallen 2-0 behind that Forest? What does that say about what you've got in the squad? Yeah, I've, sp- I've spoke about the qualities of the of the squad a lot, um, but also you have you have no choice. I mean, uh, after you lose, if you lose a game, whether it's 9-0 to Liverpool or whether it's 1-0 at home to somebody else, you, you, I mean, you have to respond, you have no choice. So um, whatever happens the weekend before, we... We put to the side. We, we obviously review it. This is where things went right. This is where things went wrong. And we get back to work. So, um, yeah, the boys responded fantastically well, but I, I expected them to. Um, even at Nottingham Forest, 2-0 down at half-time, I expected them to. Um, and, yeah, that's the same again this weekend. I fully expect and a full belief in, in, in what they're going to show me on Saturday. And all all Premier League players are very talented. That's that that's a given. But we've seen many players, many teams over the years, crumble, having had lesser disappointments, really. And I just wonder, having gone two 0 down at Forest, if you ask any any player, they'll always say, "Oh, there's a real good spirit in the dressing room. We're all together, and it's special, the best atmosphere I've ever worked in." But you know, you've been in a lot of dressing rooms. Is the one here? Is it rare? Is it special? Is it different? Um, yeah, I think for any team to have any success, they have a real togetherness, and um, that doesn't mean that you all get on, but you have a real drive together to succeed something, um, to achieve something. Rather, and I think last year, winning promotion out of the championship. Um, is is tough. It's a long, hard season. You go through real tough moments, um, and and they came through all those scrapes um, towards the end of the season when people were maybe asking questions about us being caught. The boys go to Huddersfield and put on an incredible display f- against the team chasing us down. Nottingham Forest come here chasing us down, full of momentum. They put in one of the best displays I've seen in a high pressure situation. So. Yeah, maybe because I'm close to them, I just come come to expect it from them because that's that's how they are. Yeah, they're 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 an incredible group, and um, will we suffer tough moments in this league? I'm sure we will. Um, as you said, the big quality all over it. So um, newly promoted, we'll 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 suffer some tough spells in games or some tough games, but I, I fully expect them and believe they'll respond in in the right way every time. And with you, you mentioned your family don't see you much anymore and whatever, but. Having done this job for a couple of weeks now, have you noticed that there's any great difference between Gary O'Neill, the first team coach, and Gary O'Neill, the caretaker manager? Um, yeah, I, I mean you have to do you have to do loads more. It's just it's your responsibility now. How everything looks on a Saturday is is, is down to you, um, and I, and I enjoy that. Um, I I am enjoying it. I think it, there is obviously pressures that come with it, but yeah, I've I've enjoyed it so far. Um, and hopefully, when you ask me again at five o'clock on Saturday, I'll still be enjoying it. You, you've got to make yourself more unpopular, though, haven't you? Now, now you're the decision maker. You're upsetting players. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, I enjoy making the decisions. I think that, as I said, we've got a good group. They know we're in it together. Um, they know that all decisions I make, all decisions they make, are always for the best of the group. Um, so yeah, we we go to Newcastle which is a real tough challenge but we we go there together um, and we see what we can achieve Good luck Gary thanks mate Morning Gary Um, Can I just ask you for an injury roll call ahead of the Newcastle game and maybe an update on on David Brooks after his run out for the development squad Yeah so we're we're in a similar place so 
uh, game comes too soon for Joe Rothwell, Ben Pearson, uh, they'll still be missing. Um, David Brooks suffered a slight setback in the development game that he played. Just a, a, he had a slight awareness in his hamstring, some pain in his hamstring, um, which is obviously initially disappointing for for him, um, but not 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 unusual for any player that's been off the grass for that long with long term injury or whatever it may be. Um, when they come back, there's always a spell where they, they need to get their body used to to being back on the grass every day. You see, I've seen it so many times. If players I've played with who maybe come back from a cruciate injury and they everyone's excited to see them back, but they have to adapt again to the to the stresses of of playing football every day. So, yeah, not not a huge surprise, although disappointing, especially for for Brooksy. But um, yeah, we, we we were never planning to rush him back anyway. Um, it was always David's best interests. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he see how he recovers from that. Is Junior Stanislas getting closer to inclusion in the squad as well? Yeah, Junior's trained well. Um, he's been on the grass for us for a good few days now. Um, maybe from late last week. So good to have Junior back. Obviously, he has big quality that that can help us, no doubt. Just talking about um, Eddie Howe, I think you only played with him for nine minutes in that Nottingham Forest game at the uh, first day of the 2002-03 season. I can't remember that one. <laughs> so you can't remember that, was, cause that's, that's when he sustained that serious knee injury that almost robbed him of the, the career that he would have craved in the Championship yeah. and the Premier League. And, and it's so good that he's gone on to do that in management. So you, um, can you remember anything about his early days? Um, I remember when he, I remember him in training being a really good player. I mean, when... He'd obviously arrived, and um, as, you, as you do when a new player arrives, you have everyone's eyes are on them. Or what's what's this guy like? What's he going to bring? Um, and he looked comfortable. Um, was obviously good on the ball, um, and then suffered, as you say, some. So it's a real tough, tough period at Portsmouth. And what I remember from it was how how well he he sort of he responded in those difficult moments, and I, I suppose that's one of the big keys to to where he's to where he is now